Welcome back again, everybody. Continuing in our series of filters and EQ, today we're going to be looking at um, something that uh, is really quite powerful when it comes to circuits. If you remember in the first video when we talked about um, inductors in our RLC circuits, we talked about how um, with inductors and capacitors combined, we can make resonant circuits. Now, one of the practical challenges in using inductors in guitar effects is the fact that usually with the values that we need to get resonant behavior at the frequencies that we need, we need lots of inductance. And to get lots of inductance, it takes a big coil of wire. And a big coil of wire takes a lot of space and is also expensive. And so in order to um, try and work around that, there's actually a cool trick we can do with op amps. And that is using the nature of um, how an op amp tries to keep its input terminals balanced and using a couple of resistors and a capacitor to create a circuit that is called a gyrator. Now, a gyrator is a type of circuit that actually mimics the behavior of an inductor that has one of its ends tied to ground. And so I've got right here a very basic gyrator circuit. Our input signal comes in right here and um, through the capacitor, it goes to our non-inverting input terminal. There is a resistor that gets tied to VREF, or if it's a dual supply op amp, it would be ground. And then we have a positive feedback resistor, okay? And so what this does is it ends up mimicking the behavior of the inductor by having a very low impedance at low frequencies, but having a high impedance at higher frequencies. And the really great thing about this is that we can change the, um, the value of inductance that is seen by the rest of our circuit just by changing our component values in here. In fact, we can make most of the change just by adjusting this resistor within reason. As we change this resistance, it'll actually change the behavior to act like a bigger or smaller inductor. And to see how this gets applied, we're going to be looking at the Boss GE7. And I've got here a simplified schematic of the Boss GE7. Um, I say simplified because I have left out the JFET switching and um, the, the unaffected bypass path and everything. This is just the audio signal path um, that is seen when the effect is engaged. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through this and take a look at what we have here. We have an input resistor and an input capacitor. So we'll be blocking some of our DC. We have our um, pull-up resistor to VREF here, but C1 and R2 also form a uh, high pass filter, but because of the values of these, it's actually a pretty low corner on the high pass filter, but they do form a high pass filter because VREF, since that's where we're biasing our signal to, acts as an AC signal ground, okay? So once we come through there, we now come on to the non-inverting terminal of this first op amp, okay? Non-inverting terminal, we have a resistor in the feedback loop. And as you can see, the ratio of 4.7K to 470 ohms is an amplification factor of 10. So our input buffer is actually an input gain stage with a factor of 10. But then we also have a low pass filter formed by R3 and C2 as it comes down through here, okay? Um, these values are not particularly large, so we're only rolling off some of the some of the very top end of our signal, and that's actually good practice so that everything downstream can be a little more stable. So we come on the output side of our 
first gain stage having rolled off a little bit of the very lows and a little bit of the very highs and amplifying everything else by a factor of 10. And then we have our, um, we have an output resistor here coming on to the non-inverting terminal of the second stage. Because there's no DC blocking cap, that means that the second stage is directly coupled. So its bias voltage is already being supplied by the output of our first stage. So we don't need to another resistor to tie it to VREF. But then we also have a level control here. Okay, and this level control, it may look a little funny um, how it is arranged here, but what it's really doing is um, it's basically setting the amount of gain in this stage because we have a feedback resistor in the negative feedback loop, but then this goes through a path to ground. And so this level potentiometer, this is actually a slider in the pedal, but this level potentiometer is actually setting what the gain of this stage is. And um, you can see that with a fixed resistor here, that means we're going to have a minimum level of gain that can be set. And um, this capacitor mostly is just acting as a DC blocking cap, okay? Um, so what we can do is we can look at how much resistance there is between this point on our potentiometer and this point on our potentiometer, and it will allow us to set the ratio of this to this to find our gain, okay? So there we are taking care of the level of our uh, circuit. And next we come to a really big kind of ugly op amp stage or ugly looking op amp stage, okay? Um, so we are coming through our 3K3 resistor, 3.3K resistor to the non-inverting terminal of an op amp, which is all well and good. But then you can see that we've got this feedback loop and it comes up into this whole big bank of controls. And these controls are actually each of our frequency bands that we have controls for in the, in the pedal. These are all 10K um, sliding potentiometers and um, you will notice that they all have the same architecture. Okay, there is a potentiometer that balances between the positive terminal and the negative terminal of our um, uh, of our op amp. Okay, so essentially what this is doing is this is changing the balance of each of these bands on the input terminals of the op amp. So if we were to make it so that the slider is more towards the, um, the positive input terminal, we are reinforcing that frequency content and we will therefore have more, more of it. We're boosting that signal. If the potentiometer goes towards the negative input terminal, then what that means is that we are de-emphasizing that, which means we're actually cutting that frequency band here, okay? Now, each of these bands, or each of these first six bands, all have an identical topology, okay? Our input signal comes up here, and um, it's the same input on all of our seven potentiometers, and the output side or the other side of all of our potentiometers gets tied back around to the negative terminal and then the potentiometer is changing the balance of which side is it going to. Is it going to the positive terminal or the negative terminal? And if we look at each of these op amp stages that are up here we see that we have a capacitor. Okay, this is a this capacitor will serve to block DC 
but this capacitor is also the same or this capacitor is is acting a little bit like a filter here and then we get into this section if we compare this section in the box to our gyrator example that we had before we will see that it's the same okay so we come up here put that back like that and so what's end up, what's ending up happening is that we have a series capacitor and a series inductor the equivalent of this block let me put this all in a box here the equivalent of this block whoop kind of ugly is the same as a capacitor in series with an inductor really ugly inductor going to our reference voltage or AC ground okay so what we have done here is we've created we've created six identical resonance circuits or identical topologies we've created six resonance circuits here that each are acting like a capacitor and an inductor okay which means that these are a tuned bandpass filter and so each of these bands correspond to the frequency that is determined by the component values okay and the boss engineers actually did kind of a, a good thing in that they made they made the resistors be as close to identical as possible in fact all of all of these resistors are identical values okay all all the way along for those six stages and then the capacitors are what is really changing the other resistors do differ slightly in the in that about half of them are 100k and the other half are 82k but those are all pretty close and that's just to make it so that we get nice even octave spacing of 100 hertz 200 hertz 400 800 1600 hertz 3200 hertz and then 6400 hertz which really the 6400 hertz here is um it is really what is um it's just a high pass or low pass sorry it's just it's just acting like a low pass filter shelving off the very highest frequencies okay so it's actually really quite clever using the capacitor with a simulated inductor to create these different bands for our graphic EQ in a lot of really high-end like hi-fi systems or on like Mesa boogie amplifiers that use graphic EQs um, you you tend to have real inductors but because in pedals we want them small and we want them cheap and we don't need the power handling of a really big inductor we can get away with just using a bunch of op amps and a few passive components to determine each of these bands and then we use the potentiometers just to control how that band um, impacts our op amp stage here when the potentiometer is exactly in the midpoint here then we have the same signal on both the positive and negative terminals which means that that resonant band isn't doing anything it's neither emphasizing nor de-emphasizing the signal because essentially the the signal is canceling itself out on the input terminals that's how you get flat at the center setting of your potentiometer you get cut when you slide it down and you get boost when you slide it up so that's where all the equalization is happening is right here with this op amp stage once we're done we move on to just the output stage which is pretty simple so first we have a high pass filter here but these are very large values so really we're blocking out DC and getting rid of like some of the very very low frequency content then we have a low pass filter here but again because these are relatively small values we're just taking off some of the very top end that will help get rid of anything like any noise that might have been generated inside of the circuit or whatever um, and then we have another high pass filter 
Now this one's got a slightly higher corner than our first one, but with this one mega ohm resistor right here, we're still just rolling off some of the very low frequency content, um, mostly so that we don't end up, you know, saturating our transistor down down the line. But just three cascaded RC filters, and then we come into a really basic transistor stage. Okay, in fact. We have an input signal on the um, on the base. The collector is just tied to our positive voltage, and the emitter has a resistor to ground. And we take the signal off the emitter, which means this is an emitter follower. And if you remember, an emitter follower is a simple unity gain buffer um, circuit. So all this is doing is buffering the signal after we've done our passive filtering. So, you know, really it's turning all of this into an active filter so that it's all buffered. We have a small series resistance on the output, and then we have our DC blocking cap. We have a pull down resistor, and this also functions as a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a high pass filter, but it's not going to be enough to really impact our guitar signal. It's more so that we have the DC blocking of the capacitor and the pull down functionality of the resistor. And then it goes to the output. So if we were to, you know, at the beginning of this exercise, if we had just zoomed out on the whole entire schematic, um, it would have looked a little overwhelming. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. It would have looked like a little bit overwhelming of a circuit, but when we break it down, we see we have a, an input stage with some gain. We have a, another op amp stage that is actually controlling our level control. We have another op amp stage where we're just controlling the balance of the input with each of these different resonant bands. And then we filter the output through some passive RC filters and we do a simple transistor buffer and we output the signal. So hopefully this helps you um, understand what's going on here a little better and hopefully it helps give you a little more confidence to be able to look at a schematic that may seem really kind of intimidating at first, but to break it down into its basic parts and be able to understand what's really going on inside the circuit. And until next time, take care.